Mr. Lanza, Lanza, good morning, and I gather you're splitting your time with Mr. Mackey. Yes, um, I get 10 minutes, he gets five minutes. Okay. Good afternoon, if it so pleases the court. My name is Mark Lanza, I'm special town counsel for the town of Wayland. I represent the Wayland Board of Selectmen in this case, who are the appellants, defendants appellants. Um, as the court knows, what we are seeking is a reversal of the trial judge's decision made on a summary judgment motion, uh, finding that the Wayland Board of Selectmen violated the open meeting law uh, and issuing a permanent injunction against the Board of Selectmen from conducting or assembling a performance evaluation the way the board did in this particular case. What's at issue in this case is the uh, an interpretation, and I believe this will probably be the first appellate interpretation of the term deliberation as defined in the open meeting law um, as amended in two, effective 2010. Um, the prior version of the open meeting law, as the court knows, defined deliberation differently in that <clears throat> uh, the prior definition didn't recognize email communications, which is the way a lot of things are communicated these days, as we know. Um, in that prior definition, there was no mention of uh, communication by email constituting deliberation. Uh, under the new definition, which is on page eight of my brief, um, it's, it does include a reference to communications by emails as a means of communication that can constitute a deliberation. But then there's a very important exception. It says, if the communication is transmitting documents um, to be discussed at a later open meeting, um, and the communication does not contain an opinion, that's okay. And of course the issue is, what does that mean? Does that mean the document being transmitted doesn't, doesn't uh, include an opinion, or does it mean the email communication or other written communication transmitting the document to be later uh, discussed? Which, which one is it referring to? Uh, we would urge the court that it has to be referring to the communication that transmits the document and not the document itself. Why? Because virtually every document that's transmitted for later discussion at a public body's meeting contains some sort of an opinion, reports, recommended decisions, um, recommended findings. That's somebody's thoughts, that's somebody's opinion. Um, and to rule that um, the document being transmitted, if it contains any sort of view or opinion, um, that document, um, by transmitting it, but not discussing it in the, in the communication that transmits it, the document containing the opinion constitutes a deliberation. If the other members or a quorum of the board sees it before the meeting, um, that, is, that is not a reasonable interpretation. But can't you get around, can't you get around that by saying, see attached? and then the attachment has mm -hmm. the, the communication that you wanted to send to the other uh, members? Yeah, in, in other words, um, embed all the, all the um, all deliberations the, right. in the attachment. Um, I suppose that, that, that is one way that uh, um, the law could be interpreted to constitute a violation by essentially circumventing or subverting the law, but that's not what happened in this case. Um, in this case, this was a, a, a clear case of the board, board members saying, um, here's a document uh, that we need to discuss at a subsequent public meeting. Um, do not discuss it you know, among yourselves. And they all sent it to the chair. And there was no discussion among themselves. So you can, you can submit a document with an opinion in it, but you can't express your opinion on the document, except the person who sent it can s express their opinion in the document. I take it. Yeah, the document yeah. being transmitted can contain an opinion, but the communication um, that, that transmits the document can't contain an opinion. That's, That's what the law, we believe the law says. That, that um, seems kind of, you know, that, that I don't find very persuasive. I mean, I, I understand if you want to not have people give opinions on, deliberate about it, but you know, the doc, the document's going to contain information. From, if, it, if, if it applies to a member, it says, provided that no opinion of a member is expressed. So the question is, can a member put their views in play ahead of time, or do they have to just present their views at the hearing, right? Isn't that the issue? 
Yeah, I, I, that's the issue. Yes, it does apply to the members because if it's a document that contains an opinion of someone that's well, not a member, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. So the issue here is does it, by, by the document itself containing an opinion of the member, does transmitting that document, even though the communication transmitted doesn't discuss the opinion, does that constitute a violation of the meeting law? And we say the court should find it doesn't. Is there, is, shouldn't it be, it depends? If, if, if it says see attachment and attachment says uh, it's my opinion for these 50 reasons that we shouldn't rehire the superintendent of schools um, and that's what's going to be discussed by that very member uh, at the meeting, that's a concern. Whereas if the document is, um, well, uh, my, my understanding is that he does a, uh, a, a good job um, meeting with principals and, and, and teachers uh, and we should take that into account in our further discussion, well, that seems to fall within the change to the open yeah. meeting law. So yeah. isn't the answer it depends? Yeah, I, I think, and I, and I did give that same answer to a different question answered by another justice. Yes, it does, and Justice Bud, and it does depend. Yes, it, you could, you know, you, the, the law could be used in a way that subverts it. There's no question about it. And okay? that would be true if it was, if they were sent through the mail also. Correct. If it was just everything Correct. was collated and it's put not in, just in envelopes and mailed out, yeah. it could still circumvent the open meeting law. Although technically, at the moment, it wouldn't. Yeah. It, it, again, it, it, it does. The answer is it does depend. Mm -hmm. Now, in, uh, looking at this case, what happened in this case? The board members each developed their own view of what the the uh, performance evaluation should look like, and sent it to the chair. There was no evidence that they discussed it among themselves by email or otherwise before the meeting. And when they got to the public meeting. Then they discussed the performance evaluation based on the various documents well, that were sent. The, all the evaluations were then collated and put into, yeah. right? That, that, Correct. That's, Correct. That's the issue, so they're in one place at this point. Yeah. I mean, the, the, the statute anticipates that a deliberation could be in writing. Yes, absolutely. So, and it requires that, that a meeting is a deliberation and that all meetings must be in public. So does it, does it provide for a means to have a written deliberation in public? If, if there had been opinions expressed, would it be lawful if they simply had said, we're going to put it on the website as opposed to doing it by private email? Um, in my opinion, no, because uh, it has to be, the, the deliberation when it does occur has to be in a public posted meeting. And that's exactly what happened in this case. It was the deliberation, the actual communication yeah, about the event. A meeting is a deliberation, and a deliberation can be a writing. So I don't understand. Is it your view that there is, unless we define deliberation as you wish to sort of distinguish between the content of the attachment and the content of the email, that there is no way to permit written communications involving opinions to be exchanged among members, even if they put it all on the website for public viewing? I'm not, to be honest, I don't understand the question, Chief Justice Gates. Right. I guess uh, you're basically saying, taking Justice Slowey's example, that if I'm a member of the Board of Selectmen and I write and say, here are, here are the 50 reasons why we should uh, rehire this superintendent or this or this uh, uh, town manager, uh, if I put that in a memorandum and I send it by email and say see attached, that's okay. But if I write, here is a report of the performance evaluation that was furnished to us by somebody else, and I say uh, based on that, I think we should retain him, that's not okay. Yes, yes, I agree with that. Uh, and let's assume for the moment that I'm persuaded that there can be some means of providing written communications to all members before a meeting, so it doesn't have to be read on the record at the meeting, but also requirement that, that they, those be made public. Uh, is there any way to do that through the fact that we now have websites and means in which written communications can be made public? Yes, and, and coincidentally, that is the practice in Wayland. Before the meeting, the Board of Selectmen makes all documents that are going to be discussed at the meeting public on a website. How, how long before? Hmm? How long before? Uh, they do it on a Friday, Friday afternoon, because I've had to have, look at documents, for, and they meet, they meet on Mondays. 
So they, they do make it, they have a practice and of doing that. And the meeting that. is when? Mondays. Monday, Monday, they typically meet on Monday evenings. Um, they, they post an agenda and all the documents that are gonna be discussed at the meeting on the Port of Suckman's website by usually midday on Friday. That's the practice. That didn't happen here. That didn't happen here. That practice, that practice uh, I don't know if I'm sure it was in place at this time. Um, you know, I just wanna, I see my red light flashing. I just wanna comment on the prior open meeting law case involving the school committee um, that this court decided uh, that the judge and the, uh, the appellees seem to rely on heavily. <coughs> That is a very different case. Um, different open meeting law definition of deliberation, different procedure followed by the school committee. Um, school committee members sent opinions in the emails. Um, um, they sent them to other members, not just the chair. Uh, and most importantly, the performance evaluation was conducted in executive session. In this case, everything was in the open at an open meeting. All right, thank you. Okay. Mr. Mackey. Good afternoon, Your Honors. David Mackey from the firm Anderson Krieger. My colleague, Christine Zaleski, and uh, we represent the amicus in the case, the State Gaming Commission. Thank you for providing us this opportunity to argue. Uh, <clears throat> this court has said again and again, uh, you know, the Biogen IDEC case in 2009, the Peterborough oil case in 2016, that where the legislature speaks with certainty on a subject, then there's really no room for deference to the agency, uh, the agency's interpretation of a statutory term, the court simply uh, gives effect to the legislative intent. But the court's also made it clear where the legislature has not spoken with certainty and where the statute is susceptible to multiple rational interpretations, which we submit is the case here as reflected by uh, my counsel's argument, then substantial deference is due to the agency uh, involved. The, the question here is not how this court would read the statute if the interpretive question came up for the first time in a judicial proceeding. The question here is whether the agency statutorily entrusted with the ability to enforce and in fact here interpret the statute the question is whether that agency's interpretation is patently wrong. That's what Biogen says, that's what Peter Borough Oil says, a number of cases. Here, your honors, the legislature has not spoken with certainty on these uh, different exceptions to the definition of deliberation in the open meeting law. Uh, the AG's interpretation, which which we've seen in the, in the published guidance that uh, was consulted by the board when it followed this process in which we saw in connection with the AG's rejection of uh, the open meeting complaint in this case is not patently wrong. And therefore this court, sh court should defer to the Attorney General's interpretation of how this performance appraisal process but, works. But I mean, the AG's view is the attachment versus underlying document distinction prevails, correct? No, no, Your Honor, that's that's not how we view the AG's view. What the AG determined, and let, if I could with permission just back up for a second on the words of the statute that are, that are at stake here. The definition of deliberation excludes the distribution of reports or documents that may be discussed at a meeting provided no opinion of a member is expressed. So the, the question is whether the proviso that no opinion of a member have expressed means that the reports or documents themselves cannot express an opinion, and the AG has rejected that view. Uh, the AG, in, in its uh, decision here and its decisions elsewhere, have said the documents can contain the opinion of a member. Uh, the, other, the other possible reading of the statute is that the members can't express any opinion once the reports or documents are distributed until the discussion at the public meeting. And there's an important qualifier here. Members can't just write reports with opinions in them randomly to their co-board members. We're not suggesting that for a second. The statute contains this important qualifier, to be discussed at a public meeting. So we think that that's how we interpret what the AG's guidance Meaning was the, here. Meaning the member can give you a heads up, but 
this is my view on this subject. As long as they're not commenting on each other, deliberating with each other, they can express an opinion, because otherwise you're sandbagging everybody at every meeting. You're gonna have to present your views in the meeting. That, that's exactly right, Your Honor, and that's where we think the AG's office has drawn the line, and that's where we think the line should be drawn. Individual members could submit to an agenda package their written opinion on an issue, but as long as no opinions of a member are expressed between that time and the public meeting, then we think that's entirely permissible, and the reason why, and the reason why the AG's approach makes sense here is because otherwise you get these agenda books, which in the case of many agencies are extremely long and complicated. Use this it, example, so suppose, Mr. Mackey, we have, we're evaluating the TA and we all have to grade the, whether he or she should be retained, and I want uh, to retain the person I, I grade um, him or her an eight, and just okay. as Bud grades this person a three, doesn't want to retain the person, we both submit to, to somebody, the chair, our, our grades, as to the other people on the board, they're, they're then collated? Yes, in our view, the chair or an, another person employed by the public body, as the AG's guidance says, can compile those opinions or, or evaluations. Uh, and then, they, and then they get mailed out to everybody. And then else. they get right in an agenda package or a binder, however the board does it. The members cannot express an opinion on that material until they arrive at the public meeting. And the other qualifying being, you can't just put in the agenda package stuff about, you know, opinions about, uh, you know, the administrator unless you intend to discuss them at the public meeting. So in a sense, what you're doing is you're enabling the members of the public, public body to prepare themselves for the meeting. And the transmittal uh, letter can't say, see, a, see attached evaluations, we all think the person should be retained. Or no, because I think that would, ref if, if we all think the person is retained, then they're, ex then they're exchanging ideas. That's really a deliberation in its most common form. The, and, now, and, let and me. Given Justice Gaziano's example, is, will the public ever see that? Yes. An obligation for the public to see that Justice Gaziano gave an eight and Justice Bud gave a three? Well, in this case, the, the public did see it because the, the, the board reviewed them. After the fact, I believe. N after the fact, that's correct. I'm referring but, to during. I'm referring to. Does the public get a chance to review it at the time that the, that the no. decision is being made? It depends. It depends on what the Public Records Act says about that issue, or the Open Meeting Law says about this issue. Now, in this case, the Open Meeting Law exempts uh, individual performance evaluations from being disclosed. However, the Open Meeting Law also provides that the material has to be discussed at a public meeting. So Otherwise, it doesn't in, in work. Your, in your world. It would be okay for each person to say, I think we should, I've reviewed it, here's my appraisal of the town manager, and I think we should, we should continue with him or we should fire him. Those are not necessarily available to the public. They contain the opinions of each member, and at the meeting they can say, we can just vote on it and no one will see what they have written. As long as the material is discussed at the public meeting. That's first. And how that's much first. Me meaning, made, meaning discussed? What if, uh, what if they, do, what if, I mean, I, what, what does that mean? Did they have to make public all that was said or can they simply proceed to a vote? They proceed straight to a vote, then it's, it's a violation. Well, if they law? proceeded straight to a vote, then that would suggest that this was done as a way to get around the open meeting law. Have a two minute period of discussion, is that enough? I, I, I would think that would be enough if in fact, when the material was, was submitted, it was intended to be discussed at the public meeting. That's what the, that's what the open meeting law requires. I, I would like to say, Chief just, Justice Gantz, that, that how does that provide the it's, transparency that the open meeting law was designed to protect? Well, it's only in this case. Now there is this exemption in the open meeting law for personnel evaluations and whether they are, are disclosable or not. In almost all other cases, when individual members submit, say it's the you know, the chair of the body's audit and finance committee does a report to the members, and that's in the agenda book for discussion at the public meeting. That's, there's no exemption for that. That's going to become public right off the bat. Uh, in this individual case, these, you know, the situation that we're dealing with today, there is this exemption uh, for personnel evaluations, but in almost all other cases, these documents that form the agenda package for the public body are going to be publicly accessible by a Public Records Act. 
And where, where, where does it say that in the in definition of deliberations? That the meeting agenda, the distribution of the reports or documents, where does it say that those reports or documents will, will be made public? The Public Records Act, the Public Records Act, a separate statute. Oh, so then they can seek, they can later do a public record request and no. obtain it? Most, most public bodies post this stuff online. Yeah, I know that they so. might, but the question is what the law, the open meeting law requires. And you, it's not, I, I, are you saying it's enough to, for them, for these reports with all of these opinions to be exchanged? And then they have to then make a public records request to get it? If, if, it? if for whatever reason the public body resisted, then the open records law is a, a vehicle that uh, the but members could but use. That's, to but find the deed it. is done. The vote's already been taken. It's after the fact. At that point, but the members of the public body can be held accountable for what, what they've done and whatever they've written and so forth. Okay. I, I do want to. I, I believe your time is up. Okay. So Thank you, I, Your Honor. I am mindful of the fact that we. Over objection of your, of Mr. Uh, Harris allowed you to take five, so I don't, I'm reluctant to give you more time. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Mr. Harris. Thank you, Mr. Chief Justice. May it please the court. My name is George Harris. I represent five registered voters of the town of Wayland. I believe, Your Honors, that a substantial part of this case comes down to the statutory interpretation of the phrase provided that no opinion of a member is expressed, which is in the definition of deliberation in the revised open meeting law. That is a question of, that is a pure question of law, one that the court decides de novo. The commission, who you just heard from, the amicus commission, asserts that the definition of deliberation is inherently ambiguous because it admits of two interpretations. However, just because a statute has two interpretations does not mean that it's ambiguous. The court concludes that a statute is ambiguous only after considering the statute as a whole, the surrounding text, the structure, and most importantly, the purpose of the act here, the open meeting law, and in light of statutory construction Can I ask practically, grammar. can I ask as a practical matter? So you've yes. got a very complicated issue to present to the town, some, some enormous, the, whether you're gonna have a new school. Um, and a board member is the chair of that committee. The board member can't submit the views ahead of the meeting so that you're just going to have to start the meeting with no, nothing on paper um, from the board member providing the background, the thought process, because otherwise, they're gonna have to do everything in from beginning to end, no one can read anything. I'm just confused how that's gonna work in the real world. I think in the real world, and I, I am a former selectman in the town of Wayland for nine years, and the way we did it is we came to meetings with our ideas in our heads or our ideas written down on a piece of paper, and at that meeting, we explored and we so discussed. So no one gave out anything in advance when you decided to Not to a pick, quorum. Not, if they did, I probably would have filed an open meeting law oh, complaint. No, but, uh, forget it. No, you can't even, you couldn't give your, you couldn't write anything down and give it to anybody else before the meeting. So Only that they to could one think, other. So that they could think about it a little bit ahead of time. That's the, how the, that's how you ran things there. No, sir. The only way I could, send, if if it was me, the only way I could I could send it to one other person because that two is not a quorum out of five. Oh, so we could each send. You could send one to so and so. He could send to two others. Well, and, if I sent it to then, him and he sent it to two others, there'd be a violation. No, no. But I mean, you could send your views to one. But we can't sort of, as a matter of fact, start the discussion in an intelligent way with a document, because these, I assume there's a committee chair of each one of these. Usually there's a board member who's a chair of a committee, right? Yes. And they can't submit the views of the committee to the, without violating the open meeting law on deliberation, because that's not deliberation, that's the start of the discussion. If they're expressing their own opinions on a matter they're to a quorum outside, the outside the meeting, it's a violation of the open meeting law. The old open meeting law as well as the current open meeting law. That's so my judgment. Everything has to begin and end in the meeting. You gotta literally read your report to your colleagues first. Correct. And some have said that, well, it, it saves time by having the members read this at home. 
then they can come to the meeting already briefed. And, and by the way, that this open meeting law doesn't just apply to towns, it applies to all the independent authorities of the Commonwealth, um, the MBTA, they're gonna read their report about the billion dollar deficit. They're gonna read that to their colleagues. Well, if, if, the the, if this, sir, if this was a report prepared for the, the board but the, by the, somebody no member, else. No member could put, the member couldn't even put a cover note on it saying, I think this is a good report. I think not. Okay. And what if they publish it on the web before the meeting? On the town website and said, here is the, each of, we've asked each of the selectmen to provide comments in advance of the meeting. The website contains- I think, Your Honor, that there's a bill before the legislature to permit that, to permit discussion of things like that. And why, why, why is it not permitted now? It's public. It is public. Maybe that is permissible, but that's not the case we have right here. Well, I understand that, but I mean, I'm, I'm going to Justice Kafka's concern about what makes sense, and I'm wondering whether there's a way for it to make sense and still be within the open meeting law. I don't know. If I could come back to the, to the issue of the separate uh, readings of the statute, which we're talking about is provided that no opinion of a member is expressed. It is, it is suggested that there are two readings I think there are two readings, but I think one of them is totally wrong. The commission supports the attorney general's interpretation which exempts as deliberation reports or documents that express opinions. Now, as I will try to demonstrate, I think this leads to an absurd result or certainly one contrary to the legislature's manifest intent when it wrote the open meeting law. This commission or any public body could circumvent the definition of the of um, a deliberation by arguing that it exempts the member's opinion expressed in the document. But a document is a writing. In the first part of the, of the de definition of deliberation, an oral or written communication through any medium, etc., is a deliberation. Now we're saying, or the commission is saying, yeah, but if that well, it's not any. Bad opinion. It's not yeah. any communication. Any communication. Do, statute defines deliberation as any oral or written communication through any medium, blankety blank, between or among a quorum. Exactly. Right. Mm -hmm. Exactly to a quorum, and what the commission and others are saying is that's okay if you put it in a document. A document's a writing, and and as you read, sir right bef at the beginning of the definition of deliberation, it's saying that any writing is a deliberation. Now we're saying, yeah, but if that deliberation, if that document, that document, if that writing, if that writing is expressed as a document, it's, it's then free. We don't have to. We, don't, we can uh, debate that in private. We couldn't debate it in private uh, if it was simply a writing. Mm -hmm. But a writing is a document. You know, any debate about the, I mean, that's the easy part. You've got to debate in public. The real question is, can you distribute anything in advance with an opinion of any member on it? The debating is clearly covered, right? There's no, any kind of conversation about the document. Right, I'm not, right. I'm simply talking about the, the, the dis distribution of writings to a quorum of a board. Mm -hmm. That is a deliberation. According to the definition of deliberation, the communication of those written or oral expressions to a quorum is a deliberation. However, the Attorney General, my brother, and the Commission say, yeah, we agree with that, but it's not a deliberation if it's in a document. Well, how else do you express a writing other than in a document? So there's some kind of an inconsistency here. So to avoid or circumvent the open meeting law, all you have to do is say, I'm not gonna hand somebody a writing with my uh, court to a quorum. I'm going to hand them a document. I'll write document on it. Or I can even write report, it could be one page report. I write report on it, free and clear. That's not a deliberation. I don't believe that's what the legislature had in mind when they, and, and this, and this uh, 
court also in, in the recent case of uh, Revere versus the Massachusetts Gaming Commission, reasserted, reaffirmed the main objective of the open meeting law, which I'll quote, to provide the public with broad access to decisions made by our elected officials and to the way in which those officials reach those decisions. I submit that the proper interpretation, that the, that the plain reading of the statute, of the portion of the statute which relates to the proviso is the following. A deliberation shall not include the distribution of reports or documents that may be discussed at a meeting provided that no opinion is expressed by a member in such reports or documents. Those words don't appear in such reports or documents. I'm adding them, suggesting that that is a plain reading which follows absolutely from a uh, and, and we don't get to from the, statutory interpretation. And we don't get to the Attorney General's uh, deference because there's no ambiguity in your mind. Exactly. Now, if I could return to the facts of this case about the private exchange and why it's like the Wayland School Committee case. The exchange of documents, Your Honors, was almost identical in this case to what happened in the Wayland School Committee case. There were five members, three members submitted documents. One member of the Wayland School Committee did send it to a quorum, but uh, the other two did not. In that case, the... Um, I'm going to quote what the, um, the Supreme Judicial Court, this Supreme Judicial Court, wrote that, we hold that while some of these exchanges were not between a quorum of members and therefore were not strictly deliberation, they had the effect of circumventing the requirements of the open meeting law. And in that case, the court also wrote, governmental bodies may not circumvent the requirements of the open meeting law by conducting deliberations via private messages whether electronically, in person, over the telephone, or in any other form. In other words, I'm adding this, the form of the communication, that is whether it's an attachment, or whether you call it a document, or you call it a report, but if it has opinions in it, it is a, delibera it is a deliberation and subject to the open meeting law. Now, is the Wayland School Committee still a valid precedent? First, I say it is because the, the, the process was essentially the same. The, the accumulation, the, the uh, chairman of the board said, send me your opinions. Three members did, sent it to the chairman, he compiled it, sent the, re, sent the comments back to the board. They had all that before the meeting. That's identical to this case. Second, the procedure used in the Wayland School Committee case would have been improper under the plain meaning of the deliberation definition. In other words, what was done in the Wayland School Committee case would be found to be illegal using the definition, the plain reading of the definition of deliberation. This court wrote in the aforementioned Revere case that even the information gathering activity of a public body may constitute deliberation within the meaning of the statute. And I think that applies here. As to the Wayland School Committee case, I might note as an aside that the Attorney General has cited that case 99 times in its numerous determinations when, when people write to the Attorney General asking for their opinion as to whether a matter was uh, compliant with the open meeting law or not. The Wayland School Committee case has been cited 99 times out of maybe five or 600 cases. In conclusion, I think the board's deliberation of the town administrator's professional competence violated the open meeting law. If there are no further questions. Thank you very much.